know, this point in camp, we have 95% of our defense in. So, um, you know, the, the knowledge is there. We just got to tighten the bolts, right? So, like, just kind of what you know, typically expect and where we're at. Um, just got to fine tune the communication, make sure that we're all on the same page, specifically on the back end with the coverages and stuff like that. But um, it's about where we thought it would be. You know, the competition level is high. So, that that's all it brings another piece to it. There's so many guys who come back and then so many guys coming in. The dynamic has to be kind of an interesting one, even with yourself getting back to on-field coaching. But when you look at some of the safeties, especially you had three guys who were competing for a spot in the spring, and then that's kind of falling apart with Jason. How do you keep those guys motivated knowing that they saw so much change coming into that position over the summer? I mean, it was a, it's not like it was a secret or anything. Everybody knew that we were all fit in the spring. Uh, and, and the whole premise of this program is competition, right? That's what we're harping on every day is that the standard is the standard. How are we going to elevate our game? Well, it's through competition on a day to day basis. So that's where talking to the guys and making sure there were no surprises. Hey, look, we're bringing extra guys in because we, we need competition, we need depth, we need all sorts of things, right? So um, the, the hardest part is just giving up the reps accordingly right you know and so we've i think we've done a pretty good job of that and, and changing who's with who so that and you don't get into a comfort zone of always working with the same guy, corner, safety, safety, corner, all that kind of stuff. What's your evaluation of Marvin Gratt so far, how he's come in? You know, he's you know, obviously kind of get thrown, thrown in the fire, right, trying to learn. A, he's kind of where the, the players were last year, right? He's trying to, in a, in a short time frame, catch on. And, um, again, just he's flashed. He's pretty good, you know. But uh, we just got to fine-tune the, the communication piece. And once he gets the full thing rolling, I'm excited to see where it goes. He looks longer and lankier than I thought. Does that length show up? When he's out in the field? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's he's able to use his levers, right? He's able to use it, whether it's a catch technique, whether it's uh, rep clubbing and wrapping on, on tackles, you know, so that definitely is an advantage anytime you get a longer guy, and, that, and that's shown up a few times during camp. Mm -hmm. You mentioned he flashed. When he is flashing, like, what does that skill set look like? Well, he's, he's flashing a bunch of different areas, you know, from a physicality standpoint, you know, he, he'll strike you, um, you know, from a coverage standpoint. Um, his footwork is, is decent. He's able to use his length to make up any kind of deficiencies of footwork. Um, so, you know, again, the, the longer he's in the defense, the more comfortable he's going to be and the more confident he'll be able to play. Uh, and so these next two weeks are going to be critical as far as just to continue to gain that level of confidence. So many newcomers in general with the safeties room. I guess how overall have those guys integrated? You mentioned kind of getting thrown in the fire. Like how have those guys managed it? It's it's actually been impressive. You know, like whether it's the meeting room, whether it's on the field, guys coaching each other up, and they all know they're fighting for the same jobs, right? And that's just it's just part of college football. That is, that is what it is. Uh, and now as coaches, we're fortunate enough to have guys in the room that are challenging each other, right? Um, and so the more that more that we can have, the better it's going to be. And, and a credit to those guys, there hasn't been a lot of ego there hasn't been a lot of you know there's not friction going on you know they're they're communicating with one another at the same time when they step between the white lines they know they're being evaluated every single snap so uh, they've been a, done a nice job of that switching gears to corner what's that competition been like between Jacoby and Romello it's been good you know we got a pretty steady rotation same kind of deal I talked about earlier is we're taking that corner group and mixing them in with the safety right so like when you Anytime that you have sharp, crisp communication, you're always able to play faster, right? Well, when you're waiting for a check, right? So I so I always just rotate those guys through. Who's with the ones, who's with the twos, who's with the threes. Um, and they, they've kind of gone back and forth. It's been their days, you know, between him, you know, Kobe, Mello, Gerv, you know, uh, Shad is in the mix with, with Quentin and Tay now. So, like, there's, there's quite a bit of competition going on in that room, too. How do you see the kind of the slot situation shaping up? Would you move Gervin inside and then nickel roll when, when needed, or how do you? Yeah. How does that How does that come together? So as a secondary, our whole thought process is that the more positions guys can play, the more versatile they can be, the better off we'll be as a defense. Because you never know what's going to happen in season. Guys go down. You got to slide some guys over. So we're actually dual training a few guys, okay. uh, both from the corner spot to the nickel spot and the safety spot to the nickel spot. Right. So um, you know, we've got we feel pretty decent. We're way ahead of where we were last year at this time. Last year was kind of like, okay, like who can learn this defense but also handle it mentally? Right. Well, now we're able to go, okay, we have the time to make sure they know the defense, right? What skill set fits us the best in the situation, right? So uh, now we're able to put pieces where we want to be based on the situation, and that's going to help us. Jordan, what have you seen from McGarry? 
you know, so he, he had surgery before, um, you know, a long time ago, but like he's, he is getting his football legs back while at the same time learning the defense, right? So he's a physical player, uh, does a really nice job of, of from, a, from a footwork standpoint, his short area burst is really good. Um, he's just, you know, he's just got to get his football legs back, you know, towards, he starts to wear down a little bit towards the end of practice, which that's a conversation that him and I have had, and he knows it, you know, that's just part of the, the development piece uh, of getting here two weeks prior to camp, you know, so, um, but he's got it, the right head on the shoulders, like he's, he's got the right approach, he's doing the extra work, whether that's through film study or he's doing extra stuff with the strength staff and stuff like that, so uh, I like where he's at, uh, we just got to keep climbing. So I got, a, I got kind of a trick question for you. Yeah. <laughs> If you had to at a corner, would you want a guy who's pretty good in cover, but not physical, or a guy who's okay in cover, but a good tackler in physical? Neither. <laughs> no, so, yeah, obviously, that's the, uh, that's always the, the forever question, right? And to me, it depends on the offense. You know, what offense are you playing, right? So, uh, again, the guys have to be, know the whole defense, right? And then, depending on what offensive scheme we're facing, you know, one guy might have a leg up on the other, right? Um, but, obviously, in an ideal world, they're, they're great cover guys that aren't afraid to stick it in there. It may not be a killer, right? But they'll be willing to stick their face in there and, and throw it in contact. When we talked to you in the spring, you mentioned you wanted to see more consistency from the group as a whole. I guess have you seen that camp so far and how have the guys kind of gone about being more consistent? They have improved significantly from the spring from a consistency standpoint. Um, you know, as a coach, you're always, you're never satisfied with it, right? You're always challenging to, to continue that climb. Uh, I think that we still have a long way to go as far as uh, finishing plays, the, the, the urgency, that right? scramble drill, just, just the, the little things that can turn out to be big differences in games. Um, but we've taken significant strides. I'm proud of where the, the group's at as a whole. Um, again, though, it's it, like this afternoon. I'm going to challenge the heck out of them. But look, man, these are the things that we have to improve if we want to be where we want to be at here in a couple weeks. How much does having older players like Monte, I mean, even Jared Paul to some degree, but like you know, Monte, Kalon, how much does having those experienced guys help with that? It's huge. Right? You know, they have a different perspective on things. Right? They, they come in, they've been in other programs before, they've been in the, they've been in the quote unquote fire. Um, and sometimes it's always good just to shake things up a little bit, you know, put things into perspective for the guys and, and understand that we are always trying to compete um, and you know when you, you you try to recruit personalities that you feel like gel with the culture right, with the rest of the room that you feel like is going to help elevate the, the game of the rest of the room and I think that we hit home runs with, with Gerd and with, with, with Tay as far as being able to, to provide competition and improve the room overall from a competition standpoint.